In this session, we are going to talk about the dot matcher. The dot matcher is a qualitative technique to compare the sequences. And this technique is going to let us know that which part of the sequences are similar with one another and which part of the sequences are different from one another. There are many different dot matchers which are available online. But for this tutorial, we are going to use the emboss dot matcher. And to get an access to this emboss dot matcher, we are going to click, simply click on this URL. And when we will click on this URL, we will be directly landed to the page which is dedicated for this dot matcher. Here in this dot matcher page, you can find out the spaces where you can copy and paste your sequences. Alternatively, you can upload the sequence files here and then these sequences will be compared with one another. So let's begin that comparison. Let's assume that these are the two sequences which we want to compare with one another or in a technical words, we want to align with one another. So what we will do, we will copy this first sequence and we will paste it here in this box and the same what we are going to do for the second sequence. We will copy it and we will paste it into the box. Then we will fill up the rest of the other information. So some of the information is mandatory while the some of the informations are optional. For example, the stretch plot, if what you want to have, the stretch plot or non-stretch plot, it's up to you. What type of the in output you want to have? You want to have a postscript type of output or you have a picture output in the form of PNG? What type of the title you want to expect? And let's assume that we want to give a title to our dot measure plot as our first, first plot. Let's assume for a moment. What's a graphical subtitle you want to give to your plot? It's up to you. What is an x-axis title and what's an y-axis title? Let's assume that I'm going to give say CNGA3 human the x-axis and CNGA3 mouse on the y-axis. And then simply we can also give our email address here on this box and when the job will be completed then I will get the notification that my job is done and I can visualize the dot matcher plot. But this information is not a mandatory information. This is again an optional information. If you will give the email, it will be good. If you wouldn't give the email, then it's again fine. After filling out all of these boxes, you simply click on this run dot measure button. And when you will click on this run dot measure button, it may take a few seconds and then you will have your dot measure plot. So this is your dot measure plot. And here on this dot measure plot, you can see the lot and the lot of the black colored dots or the black colored lines. Now what these lines are telling you and how you can interpret this graph, this is very important. So let's try to understand this graph. In the class, we have, we have discussed about the, uh, the alignment. And we have discussed that there is a two different type of alignment. The one type of alignment is known as the local alignment. Another type of alignment is known as global alignment. Now don't be confused with the global alignment and the local alignment. The alignment is just a comparison. So we can locally compare the sequences and we can globally compare the sequences. Now how we could have an idea about the global comparison and how we could have an idea about the local comparison here on this graph? Let's try to understand. You can see it here that in the center of the graph, you can find out the straight diagonal line. Now this straight diagonal line is letting us know about the global alignment. From nucleotide number one, to nucleotide number last, all of these sequences are compared with one another. Now this diagonal line is letting me know that more or less the both sequences which were present on x-axis and on the y-axis, they are similar. Now along with that central, central diagonal line, there are many small diagonal lines parallel to the central diagonal lines are also appearing it. But it's very confusing for me to understand the meaning of these parallel diagonal lines. Now, it means that there is a lot of noise here on my graph. And there is need to reduce the noise. 
And to reduce the noise, what we are actually going to do, we are going to move back once again to the dot matcher graph. Uh, we are going to move back once again to this window and here this time we are going to set the window size. Previously we set the window size of the 10 but this time we are going to set the window size of 50. And when we are going to increase the window size then the magic is going to happen. And let's try to see that what magic is going to happen. This time when we have increased the window size you can you can observe it here that a lot of the black spiral small lines are gone and only you are going to have the relatively larger parallel lines. But still this graph is very ambiguous and still there is a lot of the noise and there is a need to reduce the noise. And to further reduce the noise what we will do we will go back once again on the main page and then we will slightly increase the window size more. Let's assume this time we are going to set a window size of 80. So we will run this dot matcher once again and when we run this dot matcher once again, so this time this dot matcher is, is a pretty nice one. Now this dot matcher is going to give me an idea that there is a one central diagonal line which is very obvious now and letting me know that more or less the both sequences are same. But there are the local similarities as well and these local similarities are apparent here with the small parallel diagonal lines. The small parallel diagonal lines. Now this parallel diagonal line is letting me know that this is part of the, uh, the, the CNGA3 of the mouse of in this region is similar to this region. Uh, this diagonal line at this end is letting me know that the last part of the CNGA3 mouse sequence is similar to the last part of the human CNGA3 sequence. While this diagonal line right now where my cursor is, this is letting me know that the uh, last part of the CNGA3 human is similar to the first part of the CNGA3 mouse sequence. Now obviously this is not a global similarity, this is a local similarity. So I hope so that in the, in the regular lectures you guys have a good idea about the global alignment and the local alignment. So here you are, we are going to have an idea that how we can observe the global alignment and how we can observe the local alignment. Now this uh, dot measure graph is particularly very handy when we want to observe the repeat sequences. Like in when we want to observe the repeat sequences, so here on the both axes we are going to set the same sequences and then these sequences are going to be aligned with one another and then we will observe the uh, repeat sequences if they will be present here in our sequence.